Uh, but we are going to go ahead and get started because it is 1 o'clock. So welcome to Drones 101, guys. Can I just make sure the slideshow is working for everyone one more time? Can I just get a uh, put an X in chat if it's not working for you? If it's not working, guys. Okay, we don't seem to have anybody, so that's great. Can everybody hear me all right? If I ask a question, you can just answer. Okay, cool. So, like I said, welcome to Drones 101. Uh, we are going to be talking in this class about... Uh, the basics of using drones is going to be focusing mainly on combat drones, but I'll talk shortly about salvage and mining drones either, although the basics of mining drones has never used them. Um, let's go ahead and just uh, move to the slideshow, guys. I highly recommend you follow along. Neville put it together. He's the uh, teaching director, and it's an excellent slideshow, better than, better than anything I could have done myself. So uh, let's go on to the first slide. I am not Neville Smith. I am your humble instructor, but I'm not Neville Smith. My name is uh, Antavis Umbrio. I've been in the um, playing Eve for a little over a year now, and I've been in the uni for most of that. I am a current member of the WHC, and I am an avid drone user. Drones are my primary weapon system. I have the most points in them compared to anything else, and I love them. I love flying around in Ishtar and killing things and using them for missions and all sorts of things, and I so I thought I'd... Uh, share my knowledge about uh, how to use drones. So let's go to the first slide. What are drones, guys? Or actually, it's the third slide. It's type of what are drones. Um, drones are, you know, basically little mini ships that you can launch from your ship. They're not piloted, and they can do all sorts of interesting things to help out your ship. Uh, as, the sli- you know, as the slide shows, they're robotic, be- you know, little robotic vehicles. They're essentially flying turrets. Um, they're launched from the drone bay of your ship. Most ships have drone bays. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about how that works in a second. But uh, they launch from the drone. They they require uh, bandwidth uh, to control them in space. So you can often have more in the drone bay than you can actually control at once. Um, and different ships have different amounts of bandwidth controlling, you know, which limits uh, how many drones you can use and what type of drones and stuff like that. And there are all different types. There's combat drones, which are the vast majority of them. There's mining drones, uh, E-war drones. Logistics drones, salvage drones, and all sorts of other things. And uh, as the slide sh- shows, there uh, says they're semi-autonomous. Um, you can tell them to kind of work on themselves, but they're also a little bit stupid, so you have to uh, be careful when you tell them to do things on their own. So, next slide is how many drones can you use at once? Um, there are a couple different things that control uh, how many drones you can hold in your ship, and how many drones can be in space, and what type of drones there are. The first uh, and most basic requirement to use drones is the drones skill. Um, and I should have asked this earlier, but is there somebody in the class that's uh, kind of experienced that would mind linking things for me in chat as I speak? I'm going to interrupt and see if they can do that because it saves some time. Uh, Silix, are you alright with that, I, I assume? I'm going to go ahead and nominate Silix unless uh, he protests for linking things in chat. Yep. Yeah, he, he's muted, yes. Okay, so the first thing you need is the drone skill, which Silix posted in chat. Um, that's a very basic skill. I believe it's just a one time, so it's easy to train. And for each level of the skill, you can control one drone. Uh, so this skill, it's the most basic you need, and it's very important, uh, not just for dedicated drone users, but for pretty much everybody in EVE, uh, with the exception of dirty Caldari pilots. Um, the Pretty much every ship, uh, especially those that are bigger than frigates or destroyers, uses drones in some capacity, even ships that are not bonused for drones. And uh, to not have the drone skill trained to five to allow you to use, uh, at the very least, five uh, light drones, uh, light scout drones, you're basically limiting the capabilities of your ship. You're limiting the amount of DPS you can put out or the capability to use things like E-war drones to uh, escape from fights and things like that. So everybody, everybody, everybody should at least have drones five trained, at least, even if you're not planning on being a dedicated drone user. Uh, like I said, for every level of the skill, you can control one drone in space. The next requirement for using drones is bandwidth on your ship. And if you look at the slide, there's a little uh, picture of a hurricane, which may or may not be up to date, um, that sh- has uh, two boxes uh, circled, kind of. And you'll see one that says drone bandwidth. It says 30 megabits per second. Uh, each ship that is capable of using drones at all has a bandwidth. And this, the bandwidth controls how many drones you can have in space. Um, each drone, and it differs uh, depending on what type of drones you use, has a bandwidth that it requires to launch it. Uh, for example, light scout drones, which are the smallest ones, uh, require uh, 5 megabits per second bandwidth. And so if your ship has 25 megabits per second band- uh, bandwidth, which is the most common, you can control five small scout drones, uh, five scout drones with your ship at one time. 
Uh, by contrast, a sentry drone or a uh, heavy drone requires 25 megabits per second. So you can only launch one of those at once if you uh, want to do that instead of the five small ones if your ship only has 25 megabits. But makes sense so far? And you can just answer the mumble fast question. I'll assume that's a yes. So you have you have the drone skill, you have bandwidth, and the last uh, basic requirement is the drone base size. Any ship that can use drones has a drone bay, which is a special cargo hold in your ship, which is dedicated to drones. You can put drones in it, and you can put only drones in it. The drone bay uh, is like the rest of cargo bays, measured in me- uh, cubic meters or meters cubed, and uh, controls how many drones you can have in your ship's hold, which is often more than how many you can control in space. Um, so if you, if you look at Hurricane again, you'll see a drone capacity. Uh, and if, in the Hurricane's case, it's the same as the bandwidth, although that's not always true. Uh, so the Hurricane can hold uh, 30 uh, meters cubed of drones. So, again, each drone has its own size and is usually the same as the bandwidth. Uh, Light Scout drones require 5 megabits per second bandwidth, and they are also take up 5 meters cubed. Um, so you could see that the Hurricane could hold 6 Light Scout drones, um, even though you could only launch at max 5, uh, because you can hold it, mo- you can launch at most five drones with the drone's five skill. You'll notice that 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 doesn't necessarily take up the entire bandwidth, but that's just you know a certain case. Um, there are other ships like the Dominics, for example, that has a 125 megabit per second bandwidth, so you can launch five heavy drones or five scout drones, uh, but it can hold up to 400 uh, or it's 375, I think, meters cubed of drones. So you can hold a lot more than what it, it can hold a lot more than what it could launch. Um, and that's the, that's three basic requirements: that's skills, that's bandwidth, and that's drone base size. Um, it's worth noting, of course, that more advanced drones require uh, a larger amount of skills than simply the drones one, which we'll talk about what they require specifically as we go over them. Uh, are there any questions uh, about what I've said so far? I'll just go ahead and ask for anything right now. If you have any questions about what drones are, uh, how many you can use at once, just go ahead and ask them now, either in lecture or in Mumble. Is there a way to increase it past five? No. Uh, you can launch it, but, well, yes, but it's only for um, capital ships. Uh, things like the uh, carriers can fit a module called the drone control unit, which lets them carry um, – each drone control unit allows you to carry an additional drone, and carriers can hold 10 to start with. But for any subcapital ship, you can hold it. You can launch at most five drones, regardless of what your bandwidth is. Um, Moza asks, uh, does this mean you should try and put a heavier drone in the hurricane rather than five light drones? Uh, no. You sh- actually, um, in almost every case, it's better to have five smaller drones than one, than one large one, um, both because of, as I'll talk about, tr- uh, things like tracking and is uh, just pure DPS, uh, uh, and for other reasons as well that I'll talk about. But, but generally, you should try and launch uh, more drones than uh, less uh, ones that have higher DPS. Uh, it, in the Hurricane's case, though, what you might consider doing is something like having um, – you could probably do uh, maybe like two medium drones and three small ones. Uh, I think that might be a little too much over the bandwidth. But you, you could mix them a little bit, uh, which I'll talk about again. That, that'll be more in drones one or two. But uh, you, you would not want to have one ogre, which is a heavy drone, over something like uh, five hobgoblins. It would, it would be a bad idea. And uh, as Ezekiel said, light and, for most ships, uh, light and medium drones are best because they give you more versatility, which, again, I'll talk about in a little bit. But um, that seems to be – yes, if, uh, well – and Moza asked again, are five medium better if the ship can handle it? Not necessarily, and again, that's something I'll go over more in um, Drones 102. Uh, th- the reason for that is that drones often allow you to uh, shoot things smaller than your ship can handle. So the Hurricane, being a, a battle cruiser, will have trouble shooting targets. So even if it could hold five medium drones, uh, it would be better to have five light drones because they would allow you to kill frigates, which your ship would have a hard time targeting. But, like I said, that falls a little later. Uh, So let's move on. Let's go to uh, the combat drone slide, guys. Um, So there are – we're going to be talking about combat drones first. We'll talk about uh, all the other types later. Um, I'm going to try and cover them all in this class. 
drones, although I may have to cover some of the more advanced types of drones, 102, depending on time. So combat drones are the most um, common type of drone. They're drones that just deal with DPS. Um, they're essentially flying turrets. There are uh, four types of combat drones, um, and they mostly line up to gun sizes. So there's, there's light scout drones, which are the smallest. They're essentially equivalent to small guns. Um, they take up, as you can see, 5 meters cubed of space and 5 megabytes per second bandwidth in any ship. Um, there are medium scout drones, which are equivalent to medium-sized turrets. Uh, they take up, again, five meter, uh, 10 meters cubed and 10 megabytes per second. There are heavy attack drones, which are equivalent to large blasters. Um, and it should, be, it should be worth noting that the light and medium are equivalent to kind of uh, uh, short-range guns. They have to fly to their target, so they're not, they're not long-range weapons except for the fact that they can't can fly. Um, but as far as tracking and range, they're equivalent to kind of blasters or autocannons or, or pulse lasers. You know, they're, they shoot very short. So there's light, uh, light scout, medium scout, and then there's heavy attack, which are equivalent to, to short-range um, large guns. They take up quite a bit more space than the other two per size. They take up by uh, meters cubed and 25 megabits per second bandwidth. So you would need a 125 megabits per second to field a full flight of uh, heavy drones. And finally, there's sentries which are um, stationary long-range guns. Once you deploy them, they kind of sit in space wherever you deploy them. But they, uh, you know, they're kind of sniping, sniping uh, drones. And they also take up 25 meters and 25 megabits per second. Uh, as you can see from the chart on the slide, each uh, type of drone, light, medium, heavy, and sentry, has four racial variants, um, uh, which dictates uh, what type of damage they deal. And it's exactly what you expect. Amar drones deal EM damage. Galente drones deal thermal damage. Kaldar drones deal kinetic damage. Mimitar deal explosive. Um, and there's also some differences in things like tracking uh, tracking speed uh, that we'll talk about how that impacts what we're using. Generally speaking, uh, Galente drones and Mimitar drones are the ones that are used. People kind of ignore Amar and Kaldari drones because um, they're not good for either the most EPS or the best uh, tracking. And on top of those racial variants, they, of course, all have a Tech 1 and Tech 2 variant. Any questions so far about just this slide? Yeah, and, and Silix, thank you. Silix posts the links to all of those drones, um, so you can look at them if you want, although uh, I'll be talking about them each individually with the coming slides. Any questions so far about, about combat drones? And it looks like he posted, uh, are those the uh, fighters? Yeah, well, the, there's also fighters and fighter bombers, but they're a bit special, so we're going to talk about them later. All right, so... Let's go to the Light Scout drone slide, guys. So Light Scout drones are the uh, drone equivalent of small turrets. Um, they are the fastest drones, meaning that they get to, they can fly to their target the fastest once you launch them. Um, they have very good tracking, so they're capable of hitting frigates. And uh, they take up the least amount of space, but they, of course, they also do the, the lowest DPS. A, a well-skilled drone pilot. Um, can put out uh, somewhere between 120 and 200 DPS with Tech 2 um, light scout drones, but uh, it's it's you know it takes some time to get up to that, and you know that's it's about equivalent to frigate damage. Um, scout drones require for the Tech 1 level on top of the drone skill, which every every uh, drone requires. On top of the drone skill, they also require the scout drone operation skill to one to use the Tech 1 variants. And they require uh, Drones 5, Scout Drone Operation 5, and the Racial Drone Specializations to 1 for the Tech 2 variants. Um, and so we'll talk more about the skills later, but each um, race has its own drone skill called, for example, a, a Mar Drone Specialization um, that is required uh, to train to a certain level for um, the Tech 2 variants of the light, medium, and heavy drones. And that skill also uh, increases the damage of the drones a little bit. But, uh, so back to the Light Scout drones. There's, there's four different Light Scout drones. The best, uh, and most used are the Hobgoblin, which is the Galente variant. Galente drones, uh, as a, as a rule, deal the highest damage. Um, and there are, is also a nice type of damage, is thermal, which works well against both shield and armor. Um, but their tracking is not that great. Uh, and the other common one is the Warrior, which is the fastest of the Light Scout drones. Uh, Warriors can catch um, pretty much any ship except interceptors. They're very fast, so they can, uh, excuse me, they can keep up with frigates um, and, you know, shoot them down where a, a slower drone may not be able to do that. 
uh, as you can see uh, from the little chart here, um, the the base Galente DPS is is quite a bit higher than the other ones. Um, the Galente has the highest DPS at uh, 7.2 for the Tech 2, uh, compo and the next nearest one would be uh, 6 for the Caldari one. Uh, but the Mimitar ship has the highest uh, velocity at 4,200. So, you know, keep that in mind. The, 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 if you're going to be trading drones, Galente and Mimitar are the ones you want to keep with. Um, yeah, so, so scout drones are they're, – they're, the light scout drones are the ones you're typically going to be used for hunting frigates. Either uh, in missions, you can keep a side of light scouts in your cruiser or battle cruiser, which will allow you to uh, send them after frigates while you take care of the – uh, bigger ships with your with your medium guns, um, or in PvP, you can also take out things like uh, tacklers with a good set of uh, light scout drones. Uh, Moza asks, are scout drones and combat drones the same thing? Yes, scout drones are a, a subclass of combat drones. Combat uh, when I say combat drones, that means any drone that deals damage. And there's four types: there's uh, light scout, medium scout, heavy, and sentry. They're all combat drones. Um, as opposed to things like E-War drones or logistics drones, which we'll talk about at the end. All right, now let's move on to medium scout drones, and I'll, I'll open up for Q&A once I'm done with these first three. Um, so medium scout drones are the drone equivalent, as you might uh, guess, of uh, medium turrets. They uh, have decent tracking, they have decent speed, um, but not quite as good as the scout drones. They, they, they definitely deal more DPS. A, a well-skilled drone pilot with Tech 2 medium drones can put out probably between 300 and 400 DPS, depending on the ship he's using. Um, but they have trouble tracking frigates. Uh, you know, so they're, if, you're, if you're using drones for missioning, you would not necessarily, if you could only fit one flight of either uh light scout or medium scout drones, it would probably be better to put light scout drones because they let you take care of frigates, while medium scout drones would still have trouble with them like medium guns might. Um, again, as you can see, uh, the Galente drone deals the highest uh, DPS out of all of them at 11.52 for the Tech 2 variant, um, while the Minmatar has the highest uh, velocity at 2,520 uh, meters per second um, for the Tech 2 variant. The, the, the Hammerhead and the Valkyrie are, again, the two most um, commonly used drones. The Infiltrator and the Vespa really don't get used because they don't excel at either one of those things. Um, medium scout drones, like the uh, like all the rest of them, also require the drone skill uh, to use. They require scout drone operation one as well for the Tech 2 variant. Um, and uh, the same thing for the, I mean, for the Tech 1 variant, I'm, I'm sorry. For the Tech 2, it requires, again, the same as the light scout drones. They, re they have the exact same skill requirements. They have drones 5, Scout drone operation five, and each race drone specialization to two. I'm sorry for the for the medium drone. The the light scout drones require you to have uh, the racial drone spe specialization to one for the tech two. Medium drones require you to have that trained to two. Um, uh, Mose asks, what does it mean that they have trouble tracking frigates? That means that uh, just like a tracking speed on a gun, if a ship is flying very quickly, the uh, like some frigates do, especially uh, smaller things like uh, interceptors. The medium schedule is not going to be able to track them, even if it can keep up with them. Um, it's, and it will have trouble catching them in the first place. It moves much slower than the light scout drones, so a frigate could outrun a medium scout drone. And even if it could keep up with it, it would have trouble tracking, just like a large gun might have trouble hitting a frigate. Does that make sense? And, and yes, it would say yeah, the drone yeah, miss. You. It does say the drone miss. The, the drones, when you launch a set of drones and you tell it to attack an enemy vessel, it will fly to within a uh, couple hundred meters of that vessel and start to circle it. They will orbit the vessel and shoot at it. Um, but if the drone is either too slow or has too poor tracking, they will still miss the ship, just like any other uh, weapon system. All right. And I'm going to move on to uh, heavy attack drones before I ask questions. Um and eventually posted the omnidirectional tracking. Like, I'll be talking more about modules to help improve your drone stuff later on. Um, uh, but that particular module does help improve tracking uh, and things like that. So heavy attack, heavy attack drones are the um, large equivalent of drones, uh, the, the equivalent of large uh, blasters or autocannons or pulse lasers. Um, they are quite slow. Uh, so they're not going to be catching frigates anytime soon and probably not fast cruisers either. Um, and their tracking is kind of bad. They can they can hit uh, battle cruisers and they can probably and they can hit webbed cruisers, but they're going to have a hard time with frigates. 
Um, on the other hand, they deal exceptional amounts of damage. Um, with my current drone skills, and I've got everything except for drone interfacing 5, which is a skill that increases DPS, um, with my current drone skills, I can do close to 800 DPS with a, with uh, 5 Ogre 2s, which is a Galente variant. So they can put out a lot of damage. Um, and you can often, uh, if you're going to be using heavy attack drones, you can also you can often hold more than one set of them in case uh, well, you know one of them gets destroyed. So so they're they're quite a versatile, they're quite a good drone despite the fact that they have kind of a bad rep. Um, people say heavy attack drones suck, and for reasons that I'll talk about later, that's that's not necessarily true. Heavy attack drones are very good for if you're going to be fighting something up close on top of a gate, on top of a wormhole, stuff like that. Um, they require, as you can see from the slide, uh, drones 5 uh, for the Tech 1 variant. So, you know, if you're going to get up to this point, you need to have drones 5 trained. You should anyways, but uh, they, they do require the full the drones 5 skill max. And they require heavy drone operation uh, to 1 to fly the Tech 1 variant. The Tech 2 requires drones 5, heavy drone operation 5, which is a 20-day skill train. Um, and... For, depending on which drone you want to fly, the racial drone spe- specialization to four. So to use the Ogre, which is the Galente variant, you need to have Galente drone specialization four. Um, they are, it's quite an investment to uh, train the Tech 2 versions, but it's definitely worth it if you're going to be a dedicated drone user. If you're not, if you're just using drones kind of on the side, I would not recommend the Tech 2 version because it, uh, it is a 20-day train uh, at, at minimum just for heavy drone operation five. Um, again, the Ogre is the, the Ogre is really the only heavy drone that, that I see used at all. Um, I've also used Berserkers on occasion if I know I'm going to be fighting armor ships because it deals explosive damage. But uh, at this point, things like velocity doesn't doesn't really matter if you're using heavy drones or fighting at zero, anyways. So uh, the the Galante variant, the Ogre is the uh, the one that's used the most. Um, before I move on to sentries, do you have any questions about light, medium, or heavy attack drones? You can ask and mumble, or you can type it in the lecture. I know I went through uh, quite a few slides there. Uh, Moza asked a little earlier, so if you're being attacked by drones, uh, is a good a good way to get away from them to move fast? That, that depends on what type of drone is attacking you. Um, if you're being attacked by ogres, then you could conceivably outrun them if you're on a small ship. If you're being attacked by Warrior 2s, for example, which are the fastest light scout drums, then outrunning them is not such a good option. You might consider trying to shoot them, uh, depending on what you're fighting. Any other questions, guys, about uh, the light, medium, or heavy drones? All right. Uh, so the last type of combat drone, which is on the next slide, is the sentry drone. Um, the sentry, dr- sentry drones are a bit different, are, are quite a bit different from the other the other three. Um, where the other three, once you launch them, will fly to a target and orbit it and then attack them. Sentry drones uh, are basically stationary. They, they actually do move at one meter per second, but, you know, that's kind of a joke. Um, for all intents and purposes, you can assume that wherever you drop them, they're going to stay right there. Um, and uh, and they snipe from a distance. Uh, the uh, Depending on which variant you pick... Which race you pick, you can get different ranges. Um, I believe that, let's see, yeah, the Kaldari version, the Warden, has the best range. Um, but as you can see, it also has uh, fairly low, it has the lowest DPS. Um, while the Galente drone has the shortest range, as you can see, but it also deals the most amount of damage. Um Matoy asks, are sentry drones bigger than heavy drones? So they're the exact same size. Both sentry drones and heavy drones require 25 um, meters cubed of storage space and 25 bandwidth. So so to, to field a full flight of uh, either one, to launch them to space, you require 125 bandwidth, and you need at least that in your drone bay to use them, to even to even have them in your ship, a full flight. Um, so, so sentries are a bit different, and, and sentries are... Uh, very commonly used for mission running, um, especially with things like the Mirmadon or the Dominic. Uh, because what you can do is you can drop the sentry drones, um, and you can just kind of let them... Uh, y- you, you get far off from the rats, you might uh, either fly off, or you, you could use something with the Dominic, so you can use the micro-jump drive to get away from all the rats. 
and uh, drop the sentry drones and just uh, shoot away because they deal they deal massive amounts of damage. Not quite as much as heavy drones, but uh, still quite a lot. You can deal about 700 DPS with the full flight of sentries in a in a bonus ship like the Ishtar. Um, they require uh, drones five again, so you have to have the drones go maxed. They require drone interfacing four which is a fairly long train in and of itself. The drone interfacing skill, uh, and we will talk about skills in a bit, the drone interfacing skill uh, increases DPS um, of your drones. They require drone sharpshooting to four, and set drone interfacing to one just to use the tech one variants. Um, so they, they are a bit of a train compared to the other ones, but they're definitely worth it if you plan on using drones, um, both for mission running and for PvP. Uh, one of the uh, main uh, tactics being used in Nullsec right now, if you've heard about it, is the slow cat fleet, which is basically consists of a whole bunch of Archons um, with Sentry drones killing everything. Um, and Silux is talking about drone assist, which has been changed a little bit, but, you know, still, uh, it's, it's a very powerful tactic. Um, as you might expect, uh, since these are kind of the equivalent of, of large... Um, long-range guns. Sentry drones don't have very good tracking. Um, they're going to have difficulty hitting anything up close besides a battleship. But if you get them far enough away, uh, they can even, you know, they can kill even frigates. It's, it's the whole, it goes back to the whole transversal thing, um, which is, you know, if something is 50 meters off from your ship, it doesn't matter how far it's moving to the side because uh, that distance uh, is negligible compared to the, the distance from your ship. If you think of it as kind of a, a triangle. Um, so, you know, they're very good at hitting things from far away. So get far away from whatever you want to shoot, and then just let them go. Uh, drop them and let them kill everything. Um, the, the sentry drones, unlike the other two, uh, I, I've seen all four variants of the sentry drones used for different things. Like I said, wardens have the longest range, uh, so they're often used, uh, for, with sniping dominixes on things like gate camps. Um, guards have the highest damage. Um, and they're, uh, again, the guard, the Galente variant are the highest used ones because they're DPS. And they all, the, it, it should be noted that they ha- the guard has the, I believe it's the best tracking out of all of them too. Um, yeah. So, so the Galente drone has the highest DPS and the best tracking, but the shortest range. Unbonused, uh, they only have about 32, uh, kilometers range, but you can get that up to somewhere around 60, uh, with the proper skills. Uh, which you'll notice is the base range of the Kaldari drone. Uh, I, 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 the ones I've used the most are the guard. The ones I've used the most personally are the guard uh, and the curator. I, I actually do like the curator, um, especially if you're using the Tech One variants, because uh, it has a good balance between range and tracking, which is good for things like mission running. Uh, but you know, you would also, you would, if you're using these for missions, you would also talk. About, you would also want to think about what type of damage you're dealing. Um, any questions about how sentry drones work? We're going to talk more about uh, tactics later on. Any questions about sentry drones themselves or, or the other combat drones? Um, Edmund asks, are th- is there ever any situation to use a Mar and Kaldari? Yes, definitely. Um, like I said, if you're mission running uh, and you know exactly what type of ship you're going to be fighting, you could pick one of the other drones uh, for the purposes of... of you know, what type of DPA, uh, damage you want to deal. Um, because they do, uh, you know, they do deal different types of damage. If you're fly, fighting something that's weak to explosive, you might want to use, or, or weak to kinetic, you might want to use Caldari drones instead of uh, Galentes. But uh, the default, yeah, the default to have in your ship is uh, Hobgoblins uh, or, or Galente drones because often um, they will deal more DPS even than something that uh, is weak to a different variety of damage. They, they have a higher uh, DPS multiplier, so even if something is not necessarily weak to thermal, they may still deal the most damage. So it's it's never a bad idea to use the Galente drones. Um, or the Mementar ones if you want tracking speed and, and, and speed in general. Uh, the other two are kind of a case-by-case basis. Uh, Ruhana, yeah, I am going to cover more tactics in the second class, and I, I'm going through this one a bit faster than I meant to. I didn't have the slideshow last time, so. Um, but yes, the, the the main thing with sentry drones, I'll just I'll just talk about them for a bit since they're one of the most commonly used drones. Um, the main thing with sentry drones is 
that they're very good for mission running is, is what they're most commonly used for because you can basically just let them out and ignore them. Um, what I see a lot is you'll put a Sister Jones and a Myrmidon, for example, with something like a passive tank. And you can do that. You can turn on some type of e-war module so that the rats will ignore your drones because rats will still shoot drones. Um, and you can basically just let the, you know, AFK it, although I don't recommend that. Uh, it's it's done a lot. Uh, and they will continue to just shoot everything. And you may have to move occasionally if frigates get too close. But um, the, the tactic is basically, you know, drop and forget with sentry drones because you can't really, uh, unless you stick right next to them, um, you it, it's difficult to do, to do a lot of the more advanced tactics, which I'll talk about later on. And, and I will talk about the more advanced stuff, but I want to cover Cover the basics in this class. All right. Um, if there's any more questions about combat drones, so any of the four, uh, go ahead and ask them now. All right. I'll watch chat. But I'm just going to uh, going to move on. And remember, you can you can go ahead. If I ask your questions, you can talk on Mumble. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm not going to get offended. But let's move on. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, the mining drones and salvage drones really quickly. Although, like I said, this class is going to be mostly about the combat drones. But they are drones, so let's talk about them. Uh, just a second. My slide show is being weird. There we go. Uh, it's been weird again. Okay, so um, there are a couple of different types of uh, utility drones, I'll call them, um, that are not used for combat in any way, shape, or form. And those are salvage drones and mining drones. Um, mining drones do exactly what you expect. They mine a small amount of minerals. Um, they can be used by the ship with the drone bay, uh, although there are, a lot of the mining ships may have bonuses to mining drones, uh, especially the um, mining barges, I believe, have some bonus to them. Um, but I'm going to just go ahead and say that there's really not a whole lot of reason to be using mining drones unless you're in a fleet. Um, if you're solo mining, uh, the, the benefit that you get, the, the small additional amount you get from using, the small additional, uh, ore per hour that you get from using them, uh, does not, uh, balance out the loss of, uh, protection you get from either using uh, combat drones, such as light scout drones, or having e-ward drones, which might allow you to jam out uh, someone that's trying to tackle you. Um, so unless you're in a fleet that has uh, support, like, for example, an orca or a oracle to support you in case you're attacked, um, I would not use mining drones at all for any reason, because it's just not worth it. Yeah, so like, uh, I think it's actually some of the drone boats have mining drone bonuses, and that's left over from uh, back when CCP first made them. I, I now that I think about it, yeah, the barges don't have the bonus, so that's a bit it's a bit stupid, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, you, you can get a little extra from them, but unless you're in a fleet, uh, like if you want to go to the Amar mining camp, for example, in which case they can instruct you better, uh, don't use mining drones. Especially, do not use the uh, harvesters which are a faction type, uh, which sound really cool, but they're actually really slow, uh, which means that they take forever to get between asteroids and then decreases your yield even more. All right, salvage drones, on the other hand, are awesome. Um, dang it, my, my slideshow keeps... Okay, so salvage drones, uh, unlike mining drones, are pretty awesome, especially for mission running. Um, they are five meters in size five me- and five uh, megabits per second bandwidth, so they are the same, they're the equivalent of light scout drones. Uh, so any ship with a 25-meter drone bay can carry them. Um, and they are fairly fast. Uh, and what they do is they salvage things for you. Um, salvaging has its own little system, which I'm not going to go into too much because this is a drones class. But uh, salvage drones have a base salvage percent of 3, which you can increase with uh, the salvage drone operation skill, which is salvage drone operation. Um and some ships, uh, such as the Noctis, also have a uh, bonus to them. They take 10 seconds. It's a 10-second cycle, just like the salvage module. And uh, they are actually fairly useful, even though they have a low salvage chance, because you have five of them. So what you can do, uh, if you have the space, I would not put only salvage drones on your ship. But uh, if you have extra space, like if you're in a Beardon, or a Gnosis, or something like that, a Dominix, where you have a whole bunch of space in your drone bay, it can often be useful to keep a flight of salvage drones if you're mission running because then you don't have to go back to a station and get them to salvage ship and do all sorts of things like that. You can uh, you can just 
pull in your other drones and launch your salvage drones when you're done and let them go through everything. And they work, they, they actually work fairly quickly, um, you know, level four and below. Uh, if you're interested in, uh, wormhole running, however, you, you, if you ever just go into the sleeper sites, uh, salvage drones do not work on the battleship, so then you need, uh, you really need a salvaging ship. But, but for mission running in case space, uh, salvage drones are great. If you have space, keep some. Um, the next slide is talking about uh, how they work using salvage drones. Um, so when you first deploy them, um, they they go idle, uh, and we'll talk about kind of what drones do when you go to when you put them in space in a second. But um, you know you have to you have to target a wreck just like you would with a salvager, and then you tell your drones to salvage that wreck. And there's an option in the drop down menu that you can uh, that will tell them to do that. Um, or you can set them to automatically salvage, which we'll also talk about how to do things like set your drones on automatic, in which case they will only salvage your wreck. You, you can tell them to target other people's wrecks. They will only automatically salvage your own, uh, although, of course, there's a security penalty for doing that. Um, they do not loot the wreck, which is important to, to note it, to remember. Uh, they will only salvage it, so if there's anything inside the wreck while it's salvaged, it will drop into a, a jet can, which you will have to pick up yourself. Um... So, and like I said earlier, they're, they're great at salvaging uh, small and medium wrecks, uh, especially because of their speed. Um, they can, you know, with the five of them, they can go through small and medium wrecks really quickly. Although they do have some trouble with larger wrecks and any type of uh, difficult wrecks, such as sleeper wrecks, uh, because they have such a low salvage trend. They, they will not, salvage under incapable of harvesting, for example, sleeper battleships. They can't do it. Um but and, and that, if that's the case, you will want to be using a salvage ship like the Noctis, as the uh, as the slide says. Any questions about mining or salvage drones? Uh, Benson, you did it say? I was just kind of reading it. Let me see. No, yeah, yeah. I don't know why it says that. Actually, I was I was not paying attention. Um, salvaging should not uh, should not get you any type of crime status unless they've changed that recently. Um, you should be able to salvage things safely. Uh, I mean, the, the person may shoot at you, but then they're going to get concorded. Um, it's if you loot their wrecks that you will get uh, you will get suspect. Uh, you, Moza asks uh, if you have to loot the ship first. No, you don't. You, uh, you can let the salvage drones go first, and then just go pick up the containers that the ships drop. Um, or you could loot the ships first and then set out your salvage drones. It's up to you. It doesn't really make a difference. You, you will not lose the loot because the ship is salvage. It will simply drop in a container. Uh, Sergeant Killjoy asks, are there any benefit to having all the drones on one wreck versus having this spread out? Yes, you want them all on one wreck. Uh, they have a, and the reason for that is because they each have such a low percentage. Um, it's better to have all five of them on one wreck because there's, it's just a faster cycle chance than to have them all taking a long time on five wrecks. It, I, I suppose it probably averages out, but personally I prefer to have them all five on one. And plus, it, it's easier, it's just easier to control it that way. It's very difficult to assign one drone to each to each wreck. Um, it's not worth the time. Uh, Jeff asks, if you set them on auto, do they all go to run one wreck at a time? Uh, yes. Um, that there's another setting for that. If you click, if any of you are in space, we'll talk about the drone controls. Very shortly, but uh, there's a the drone window that opens up. There's a little box in the top right hand corner, and there's a there's two things you can check. There's aggressive, which will tell your drones to do things automatically. And there's also focus fire. If you have focus fire on, which you pretty much should all the time, your drones will all will all go to one target at a time instead of spreading out. Focus fire should be on by default, I believe. Um, yeah. Any more questions about uh, either the salvage drones or the mining drones? All right, let's move on to advanced drones. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different types of non-combat drones that we're gonna that are considered advanced drones. Um, I am going to cover them more in the next class because you know I am running a little bit out of time, but I'll go over them briefly right now. Uh, so the first and most commonly used of the advanced drones is the ECM drones, which Silix just linked. Uh, he linked the small ones. Uh, oh no, he linked all all three of them. The the ECM drones. Um, are a type of e-war drone. They're really the only e-war drone that is used at all. Uh, and the reason for that is, is stacking penalties. Uh, the 300 uh, healing is the smallest, the 600 is the medium, and the 900 is the large, the difference being the, the uh, jamming strength that they have. 
And ECM drones allow you to jam the enemy. Uh, the reason that they are great compared to the other E-War drones is because of uh, stacking penalties. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, CCP decided to put stacking penalties on uh, drone E-War, which means that something like um, sensor dampening uh, – when you sensor damp somebody right, uh, regularly with modules, um, there's a stacking penalty, but the modules themselves are quite strong. So it doesn't really matter if there's a stacking penalty because you know you have enough uh, strength in the modules to account for that. Drones, on the other hand, all have a very weak uh, strength of E-War, but they also suffer stacking penalties. So, five, so instead of uh, five uh, weak but equally strong uh for example, sensor dams coming coming from drones, you have five stacking penalized sensor dams, which is much worse than just a single module. Um, ECM, on the other hand, the Kaldari E-War, uh, jamming does not work based on stacking penalties. Each module, even on ships, uh, has its own chance of activating and drones are the same, which is why, they, which is why ECM drones are used, others are not. Um, uh, ECM drones have a weak uh, jam strength compared to modules, but there's five of them. And so what you can do is you can keep a set of ECM drones in your bay, and if you have to uh, escape somebody who is uh, pointed you, for example, if you're in a, a mining ship and somebody has pointed you and you need to get away before you die, you can launch uh, a set of ECM drones, and hopefully it's – it's not a guarantee, but hopefully they can jam out your target allowing you to escape uh, long enough. And so they're quite useful for that, and they can also be used uh, offensively, uh, although I don't see it happen very often. Where, you know, it, it works the same as champs. You set them out and you try and jam somebody, and there's a chance it will happen depending on their strength and the sh- strength of the ship you're jamming. Um, Edmund, no. Uh, Edmund asks for one-on-one would a spread of E-War be effective, one damp, one target painter, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, no, because they're all so weak in and of themselves, uh, even if they were not stacking penalized, uh, you would want five of one type is much superior than one of each. Because uh, one of each is not going to do anything. They're all, they're all, the, the drone, the drone strength of whatever ECM it is is much weaker than the module strength, and it would, it takes all five to be effective. And uh, you know, e- even the jamming, which is not second penalized, doesn't, you know, isn't very reliable. It, it's useful because it allows you that chance of escaping, but it's not, you know, you, you wouldn't want to decrease that, that strength of one of them to try and spread everything out. Um, the next type of drones, as you can see, there's there's webbing drones, uh, which you know web your enemy just like a stasis web of fire. Uh, but they're they're again they're stacking penalized. They're much less effective. Don't use them. Um, it's pretty much true of all of the other E war drones and uh, combat utility drones. So energy neutralizing drones, and webbing drones. Uh, th- the problem again, they're just stacking penalized. They're not worth. Uh, the only reason you would use them was to save a mod, uh, a mid slot module, and it's generally a terrible idea. Um, so don't use webbing drones. Don't use energy, energy neutralizing drones. Don't use any of the other E war drones. Sensor dampening, tracking, disrupting, targeting, unless they change how it works at some point in the future. They're not worth the space in your drone bay, and they're not like you know they're just not likely enough to be effective to where you should uh, be carrying them as opposed to something else like an extra set of uh, combat drones. Um, Logistics drones, on the other hand, are uh, can be quite useful. They uh, repair your uh, friendly ships. They cannot repair your ship. It's very important. Logistics drones cannot repair the ship that they launched from, but uh, they can be used in a fleet, and they often are used with logistics ships to add additional uh, reps to uh, friendly ships. There's two types of logistic drones. There's the armor repair. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact name. I think it's armor maintenance bot and shield maintenance bot. And they come in all the different sizes, so there's light, uh, medium, and heavy, which uh, the difference between the amount of reps, uh, the heavy drones obviously repair more per second. And they, re- and they take up the same amount of space you would expect, 5, 10, and 25 meters respectively. Um, and they, they help repair your friendly ships. They are not as uh, – it's not, it's not a huge amount repaired. And generally speaking, uh, I wouldn't use them even in uh, – with the exception of – what are called spider repping fleets, which we'll talk about in Drones 102. Um, I would still only use logistic drones with logistic ships, the Tech 2 variants. So that's the Guardian, uh, the, what is it, the Scimitar, um, the Oneros, uh, and I forget what the, the last one is, but 
uh, those ships are bonus for these logistics drones, so it actually uh, increases their effectiveness a lot more. But um, I would use them with those ships and maybe with the Tech 1 variant, so for example the Augurer uh, and the Scythe, but uh, I would not use them on other ships, with the exception of spy wrapping fleets, which is actually a drone tactic, uh, which is actually a, a viable tactic, which we'll talk about in drones 1 or 2. And I, that was a bit convoluted how I said that, but uh, I hope I, I hope that made sense. <laughs> um, and the fighter type of drone that we'll talk about uh, much more later are fighters and fighter bombers. They're capital drones. They're meant to be used with carriers and supercarriers. Uh, for example, the Archon, the Nix, the Aeon. Um, and they're basically capital killing drones. Uh, and like I said, that's that's something for drones one and two. So we'll talk about it then. A couple slides left, guys. So uh, this class may go a little bit over, but that's fine. Um, so the next slide is drone support skills, um, and these are the skills that, much like you'd expect uh, turrets to have, these are skills that give you bonuses to drone use. Um, the most important of the drone support skills is right up there at the top, which Neville has thankfully uh, boxed twice, is drone interfacing. Um, drone interfacing increases your drone damage and drone mine and yield, although really who cares, by 20% per level. This is an excellent, excellent skill. If you have drone interfacing trained to 5, that means you, you have effectively doubled the damage of your drones because you have a 100% bonus. Um, anybody who is interested in using drones uh, as more than just to fill a, a you know drone bay on a turret boat, if you're interested in using dr- drones uh, by themselves at all, you want this skill trained. It, it is a long train. As you can see, it's a, it is a five-time multiplier. Um, so drone interfacing five takes 25 days. But it is definitely worth it to train at at minimum to three and also to four, um, because it gives you such a huge boost in your drone's damage. Uh, there's also drone durability, drone navigation, and drone sharpshooting, which increase your drone's uh, hit points, your drone's micro warp drive speed, and your drone's optimal range, respectively. Um, with the navigation, it's worth noting that drones have two different uh, movement patterns. There's micro warp drive they, they, when they are moving between ships, or the, when they're moving from your ship to their target. They turn on their micro warp drive, which increases their speed. Drone navigation increases the micro warp drive speed. It does not increase the speed of the drones when they are orbiting their target, um, which is just their su- it's called you know their sublight velocity. Um, it, drone navigation essentially increases how fast your drones can get to the can get to the enemy ship. It does not increase how fast they orbit that ship. Um, but yeah, drone durability, navigation, or sharpshooting they're the basic uh, kind of three basic support skills that increase uh, hit points. Micro warp drive speed and optimal range, respectively, and it's 5% uh, per inch level for those skills. Um, next is combat drone operation. Uh, if you remember, this is a required skill for the Tech 2 variants of the light, medium, and heavy drones. Um, and it increases the light and medium drone damage by, it's not 5, I believe it's 2%. Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain it's 2%, not 5%, but it increases the DPS of those drones. Um, by uh, a certain amount per level. Let, let me just check that real quick. It's five. I'm looking at it. Oh, okay. Well, that's even better. So it increases their DPS by 5% per level. Oh, you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of uh, the original drone specialization, yes. Yep. Combat, dr- yeah, combat drone specialization increases the uh, light uh, and medium damage for 5% per level. Um, it is actually not required uh, for those drones I was I was used. Um it, it's another basic just DPS increase, which is good to have. Um, there's also electronic warfare drone interfacing, which requires uh, electronic warfare four just to trade. But it increase uh, it's a excellent skill to have if you're a dedicated drone user because it increases your drone's range by 300 uh, 3,000 meters per level. Um, each ship has a base drone range of I believe it's uh, no, just a second. I believe it's 40 uh, 20. No, it was actually 20. Just a second, guys. Something's going on. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so each ship has a base range of 20, and you can increase that base range. So before you add modules, you can increase that base range through two skills. One is e- electronic warfare drone interfacing, which adds 3,000 meters per level. And the other is scout drone operation, which was, as you remember, required for the light uh, and medium drones uh, by 5,000 uh, meters per level. So I believe you can get up to, let's see, so that's 20 plus 25, uh, you can get up to 60 kilometer base range uh, if you have both combat drone operation and scout drone operation. I mean, sorry, E-war drone operation and scout drone operation to five. 
and then the final skill is uh, the racial drone specialization, which was the one that was required for the light, medium, and heavy uh, Tech 2 variants. And each level of the respective uh, skills, so Galente drone specialization, for example, gives a 2% damage increase to uh, that race's light, medium, and heavy drones, as well as unlocking the Tech 2 variants. Any question about the skills? I know I went over those kind of fast. All right. We're going to move on to drone modules. Um, so there are a couple drone modules. Um, you know what? I'm just going to move drone modules to the next class because it makes sense when I'm talking about the uh, drone boats. So we're going to just skip this slide and go on to the uh, last two. Uh, so the drone control range I just kind of talked about. Uh, so uh, real quick, somebody asks, where can the drone books be found for the racial drone skills? Uh, they, you can find them in any station that sells uh, skill books. Skill books are sold by NPCs, so any station that sells uh, skill books will have all of them, uh, and you can find them there. Uh, so I just talked about the drone control range a little bit anyways, but uh, your base control range, as you can see, is 20,000 meters. Uh, Cap drone operation adds 5,000 per level. e war drone adds 3,000 per level. Um, and uh, so you can get up to, to 60,000 base range. That's before you add modules. Uh, if your drones get... Uh, further away than your range, in your control range, uh, then you cannot order them to do things. Um, that, is not, that does not necessarily mean that they won't do things. It gets a little weird, but you cannot order them to do anything besides return to you. Um, if they get past 250 kilometers, which is grid, uh, if they get off grid for you in any way, even if it's not that far away, uh, then the drones are considered abandoned. Uh, which means that they just kind of uh, – they go neutral in space. They don't attack anybody, and anybody can pick them up without penalty. Um, if you want to get them back, you have to fly to them uh, and essentially reconnect to them and recall them. Uh, if you don't do that, they're anybody's for the taking. Um, and, yeah, the drone control range is always counted from your ship to the targeted drone. So even if you assist your drones to somebody – uh, the drone control is just still from you, not from the ship they're assisted to. And Jeff, you're keying up. Can you? Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, well, this class is going to go a little bit over. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Uh, but, yeah, it's fine. So, questions about drone control range. I'm moving through things kind of quickly now. I apologize. <laughs> Feel I'm aggro indeed. Um, and like I said, we're going to be talking more about this in the next class. Uh, but, so this next slide is fairly important. Drone commands. Um, this is how you control your drones in space. Uh, if you guys are somewhere safe and you want to undock so that you can see this window, if you have, if you have drones in your ship and you want to undock somewhere safe, uh, it might be helpful so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, Benson, will send your, Benson asks, will send your drones continue to shoot if you are out of range? Uh, they will continue to attack a target that they are already attacking, but they will not attack new targets uh once they leave your control range. Probably. Like I said, they do weird things once they're outside of their range. Um, but let's go to commands. So there are there are still different commands. Uh, yeah, there are several different commands that you can give your drones once you're in space. Um, and you can tailor how your drones act depending on your drone window. So so if you're out if you happen to be out in space and you have some drones in your drone bay, you will see a drone window on your screen. Um, uh, so the first command uh, that you can give is just to tell your drones to attack and it should be noted that if the drones are not combat drones that will be a different command it might be mine, it might be salvage uh, but it will, be, it, it will be the first one so if you, if you open up your drone window uh, and you launch some drones in space uh, you can right click on one of those drones so, so if, you, if, you, if you happen to have some drones and you're in space go ahead and launch them and if you right-click on them once it says drones on local space, you can tell it to attack, you can tell it to mine, or you can tell it to uh, salvage, depending on what drone it is. Um, these, that command can be assigned to a hotkey so that uh, you don't have to right-click uh, and select something. You can assign it to a hotkey, and if you're going to be using drones, I su suggest that you do that. Um, but that's the most basic one. You can also tell drones to assist a friendly target. And what that means is that the drones will engage anything that that target engages, assuming that they're within range. Um, this is used to be a lot more broken than it is. He's to be kind of fixed recently, 
But what you could do, for example, is have – what you used to be able to do is have everyone in the fleet assist the drones to one person that is uh, fast blocking, and then all the drones would just uh, attack whatever that target attacks. You can still do this, but there's restrictions on how many drones can be assisted to one person. Um, and the final command is guard. If you tell your drones to guard a ship, they will attack anything that is attacking that ship, uh, as you might expect. Um, and both assist and guard can also be assigned to hotkeys. It should be noted that uh, if you assist or guard your drones to a ship, they are still your drones and you are still responsible for anything they do. So if you assist your drones to somebody and that person attacks uh, a ship in high sec, your drones will attack that ship. And if you do not have combat rights with them, you will still get concorded because your drones attack somebody that, that uh, attack somebody when they were assisted. So you are still responsible for what your drones do uh, when assisted or guarded, guarding someone else. Um, Calypso says, if your drone is orbiting, how do you right-click on it? I'm sorry. Uh, do not cl- don't try and click on the drone itself. You'll, no- you'll notice that there is a drone window uh, with a drones in local space uh, drop-down menu. Click on the drones in that section, not in space. It's too hard to catch them in space. Um, so, so, so those are the basic commands. You'll notice also that if you open up that drone window in space, there's a little uh, the little options bar in the top left corner, the four bars. If you click on that, you should see some uh, a couple options. You should, you should see passive, aggressive, and focus fire. Uh, you can set your drones to be either passive or aggressive. If they are aggressive, they will continue to do whatever you have ordered them to do um, as long as there is valid targets. So if you order them to attack something, it will con- uh, even if you do not, if, once they kill that, they will continue to attack hostile targets to you um, until you tell them not to, until you tell them to stop. If you set them to passive, you have to order them to attack something each time. Um, so you have to be careful with this. You can set, for example, if you're mission running, you can set your drones to aggressive, and that allows you to kind of just sit back and do whatever you want while they kill things. But uh, somebody, uh, so th- this is something that's happening recently. Somebody could, for example, um, uh, trick your drones into attacking them, and there are ways to do this, especially if you're using a mobile tractor unit. They could attack your mobile truck unit, which makes them uh, suspect. But your drones will now attack that person uh, because they are suspect, and your drones can attack ag- aggressive uh, suspect targets, right? So if your drones are aggressive and somebody attacks your mobile truck unit, then your drones will attack that person, and that person can now attack you without being concorded, which means that if you're AFK, you're going to die because your drones attack somebody because they attack your, micro- your mobile tractor unit. So you have to be careful with aggressive. Um, also in fleets... If you have your drone set to aggressive and they start shooting somebody besides primary, that can be a problem. Um, essentially, you know, if you want to set your drones on aggressive, that's fine, but be careful about it. The passive option is much better, but it requires you to control them much more carefully. So keep that in mind when you choose between the two. Focus fire, uh, which is the third option, is always good to have on, and it basically will tell your drones to always attack the same target. All five of them will attack. Um, the same thing is instead of spreading out between different targets. It's just good to have. Uh, there's another option, which is um, attack and follow, I believe. Yeah, attack and follow. But uh, that's for fighters and fighter bombers, and we'll talk more about that in the next class. Any questions about the drone commands in space? Is return to drone bay different to scoop to drone bay? Uh, yes. Return to drone bay will tell drones... I'm sorry, I, I missed the section... Return to drone bay will tell your drones to fly to your ship and to return to your drone bay. Scoop the drone bay means that your ship will fly to them and scoop them. So scoop the drone bay can be used on any drone in space that has that is either yours or abandoned. Uh, for example, if somebody dies and they have a whole bunch of drones in space, you can go to those drones and scoop them up. You cannot tell them to return to you because they're not your drones yet. Um, you'll, you'll also notice that if you have a drones that are abandoned in space... Um, which you can't you can actually abandon your drones if you want by right clicking on them in the drones window. Uh, but if you have drones that are abandoned for any reason, you can't right click on your capacitor, and there will be a reconnect to lost drones option, which will allow you to reconnect to any drones that are yours that were connected to the ship that you are that you were flying when you lost them, um, and then you can they will essentially be yours again. You can tell them to return. Uh, the using drones effectively, we will talk about in the next class. Can uh, you assign 
can you assign targets to drones, or do you just target something and then that'll attack whatever you've targeted? Uh, no. So, so drones work just like turrets. You can assign them targets individually if you want. Um, so, for example, if you're in a, a drone ship, right, like the Vexer, you can tell your turrets and your drones to attack separate things. Uh, the attack command for drones is separate from the attack command for turrets. And you could tell all your drones to attack something different, each one different, although that's time-consuming and generally not worth it. Uh, J- Jason asks, if you abandon the drone, will NPCs stop attacking it? Uh, no. And in fact, they may continue to attack other drones, depending on if you're still on field or not. If, if they are, if they are, if they have been attacking it and you abandon it, they will continue to attack that drone until it's destroyed. And they may switch to another drone, depending on uh, which NPCs you're dealing with. And I'm going to talk about the rest of the stuff in the next class, guys. So I'm just going to open up to a, a general Q&A for about five minutes.